Guys, I, I know I keep talking about Tony Seaver, but the problem is that we're just seeing all these headlines that basically he created himself in 2014, in 2012, 2015, 2016. Now, all of a sudden, these headlines are popping up. He said things like renewable energy would triple, in fact, triple, and then basically double and double and double again. However, a lot of people said that that was ridiculous, but now we're closer to tripling renewable energy capacity by 2030 than we realize, says the IEA. Now, Sieber has critiqued the IEA on, on many times in a friendly way, in a kind of a lighthearted way, saying the IEA, you know, they're great, but they always undersell. Whatever the IEA says, you can pretty much double what they say is going to happen. So what does that mean for energy worldwide? We're about to see the biggest explosion in renewable, hist- in renewable energy in the history of mankind, and it's gonna change the world in so many ways. Guys, I'll have a series of videos coming on how this will change the world. I don't think people realize the big changes that are about to come because of what Siba calls superpower. When countries have 200% more energy than they need most days of the year, which they will, it's gonna transform everything. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking, it's great to see you. Governments are rolling out renewables at a record pace and tripling capacity by 2030 worldwide is within reach, says the IEA. Now that was essentially the Paris Agreement target and it could actually happen. A lot of a lot of new papers are saying, nah, nah, it's not gonna happen, it's ridiculous, we're miles away, but global renewable cap- capacity additions reached around 560 gigawatts in 2023, an unprecedented 64% year over year increase from 2022. This year though, they're set to double again. China of course was the biggest contributor by a mile, but keep in mind, solar panels, particularly battery energy storage, which is really the key here, and wind prices have dropped significantly, but particularly for battery storage. The International Energy Agency's newly released report called COP28, tripling renewable capacity, pledge tracking countries' ambitions and identifying policies to bridge the gap, said that few countries have explicitly laid out their 2030 targets for installed capacity in their existing nationally determined contributions or NDCs under the agreement. However, of the 194 NDCs submitted, only 14 included explicit targets for total renewable power capacity for 2030. Official NDC commitments currently amount to 1,300 gigawatt, which is only 12% of what's required to meet the global tripling goal set in Dubai. But new country by country analysis, which completely contradicts the mainstream media narrative, the narrative you've been hearing from all these different media sources, and I've been guys sticking to this all along. I know I made predictions a couple of years ago, many of you have mentioned those, and you said I was crazy, I understand that. Anyhow, I know I said that solar would be the primary source of energy in 2030 and that renewables would be at least 80% of worldwide solar battery and wind storage combined, along with with hydro, would be the primary source of energy, would be more than 80% of the world's energy. I still think that'll happen. And I know that sounds insane, but the IEA are suggesting that it could be possible. Of nearly 150 countries they analyzed, governments' domestic ambitions actually go much further than what people realize, corresponding to to 8,000 gigawatts of global renewable capacity by 2030, over 8,000. Nearly 50 countries are on track, says Electric, to reach or surpass their current plans. And China is by far the biggest contributor We don't know officially what their official targets are, but China's goal of 1,200 gigawatts of solar and wind capacity by 2030 um, will, of course, be surpassed this year. I mean, China is saying 1,200 in 2030, but they're going to surpass that number now. Imagine what they're going to be at in 2030. The IEA is saying China is massively underselling what it's actually doing. It's basically under, it's massively over delivering on its climate targets. What this means, that actually China accounts for over 90% of all renewable capacity mentioned in NDCs. China in 2030 will will have 2.5 times its 2022 level of renewable energy. 
Guys, if you work in the coal industry, I know there's a lot of people in Australia here who work in the coal industry. Here where I live now, there's a lot of people, probably half the people in this suburb that I live in are employed in some way by the coal industry. And you know what, guys, you're gonna hate me, but find a new job. Find a new job. Because where's all that coal going? It's going to China. The majority of it is going to China. Not all of it, but the majority is. But China is eventually, I'd say within 10 years, going to eliminate a massive, a massive amount of this coal use. In fact, I would suggest most coal will be eliminated entirely from China by 2040. That's not very far away. If countries were to include all their existing policies, plans, and estimates in their new NDCs due next year, which will consist of revised ambitions for 2030 and new goals for 2035, they would reflect 70% of what's needed by 2030 to reach the tripling goal, which corresponds to 11,000 gigawatts of installed renewable capacity globally. Keep in mind, countries are constantly revising their targets. Because 90% of us live on the Sun Belt worldwide, the population, as the prices of solar panels continue to come down, there's three massive solar panel companies in China who control most of the most of the market. They're pushing prices down. And that has meant that governments and governments are going, well, um, solar and batteries, a lot cheaper than nuclear, a lot faster than nuclear, a lot better than coal. Um, well, let's let's do it this year. Well, let's build out more. And it's so fast. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait 15 years for a nuclear power plant to be built. You don't have to wait. You know, even five, six, seven years for a new coal plant to be built, which you, you know is going to be probably um, dead anyway by the time it's it's out in terms of cost competitiveness. It can't compete on price. Dr. Kate Altieri, an analyst at Global Energy Think Tank, Ember said this: the latest year of record growth brings the tripling goal within reach, and should give leaders the confidence to upgrade their targets. Current NDCs do not accurately represent countries' actual ambition, and more will be needed to make up the gap to get to this tripling. The next round of updated NDCs provides a big opportunity to solidify and more importantly, increase existing 2030 renewable capacity ambitions to meet the global tripling goal. Now, countries are seeing what's happening in uh, Spain, uh, massive onslaught of solar there. Germany, same thing, California, Australia, they're seeing what's happening and they're going, hang on a minute, California is making this whole battery thing. It, it actually makes sense. They're proving the point. They're, they're kind of like the pilot project here. California's revolutionized their grid within the space of a few months, completely revolutionized it in a way that I don't think anyone saw coming, except probably Tony Sieber. So maybe we should do that too. This will continue to happen. I mean, think about all the other states in America who are seeing what's happening in California going, ah, wow. That works. According to the report, the amount of renewable capacity added worldwide each year has tripled since the Paris Agreement was signed in 2015. This is largely thanks to policy support, economies of scale, and technological progress, which has driven down the cost of solar and wind by over 40% over the same period and made them widely competitive with fossil fuels. But here's the thing. I mean, the IA talk about solar and wind a lot. I think what they're leaving out here is the fact that um, solar and wind it, it doesn't work unless you've got batteries. If you've got batteries, it works perfectly. It works better than perfectly. It works incredibly well. You essentially have pika plants, right? These big batteries can act as pika plants. But they don't have to operate in that way. They can operate instantaneously. I mean, you can turn on these battery pika plants literally in a matter of seconds. You cannot do that with a pika plant. It takes longer than that. And they are so insanely expensive to run. Like Elon Musk said many times, we're going after the low hanging fruit. We're getting rid of pika plants. Now, if you own a pika plant, if you have an investment in any way, shape or form in a pika plant, check check the companies you're invested in. Make sure that none of them own pika plants because if it's a fossil fuel pika plant, it will be extinct by 2030. They don't stand a chance. They're the lowest hanging fruit and they're finished. Key challenges remain, said the IAA, from lengthy wait times for project permits, but lengthy wait times might be 12 months for a solar power plant and then they get built in a matter of weeks versus 15 years for nuclear. However, inadequate investment in grid infrastructure can be a challenge as well. The IEA says the need to quickly and cost efficiently integrate variable renewables and high financing costs, especially in emerging and developing economies, are clearly a challenge. Nearly 200 countries pledged to triple the world's renewable power capacity this decade. The media has been saying just ad nauseum constantly there's no chance of that happening i've seen it on these ev websites and stuff they've said it as well guys i'm telling you now 
it absolutely will happen. Just because the naysayers say it won't, doesn't mean that's the most likely outcome. The most likely outcome is clearly based on simple mathematics. The cost to install solar, wind and batteries, especially solar and batteries, is so much more favorable than what it used to be. And so much more favorable than the alternative, which is fossil fuels. Thanks for watching.